So this week on the DIY van build, we've got ourselves all tangled up trying to pull our wire in this van. Look at the mess we got behind us all over that roof. And to think, those wires there, those aren't even the ones we're working on this week. What? So if you're new here, my name's Jeff Dares, this channel is Dares Drives, and we're currently converting a 2019 Mercedes Sprinter van into a 4x4 overland roaming home, which we're gonna travel the continent with. So if you've liked that kind of thing, maybe hit that subscribe. Now all joking aside, I agree. The electrical is one of the most daunting things you have to research when thinking about building one of these vans. And especially with the 120 volt wiring, it can be really dangerous if done incorrectly. Now I will say, with the more research I did, it looks pretty straightforward, and my confidence has gone up quite a bit. And they do say confidence is key, right? But I guess they also say curiosity killed the cat, and while confidence kind of brings curiosity, hmm, good thing I'm not a cat person, eh? Right, Winnie? Right? We don't want no kitty cats. Now, I probably should clarify real quick, that I have no problem with cats, but I do prefer the breed of the dog. But that's not what you're here for today. We all know you clicked on this video so that you could see how I pull my wire in my van. My 110 volt wire to be exact. Now for this wire, I could have just bought 12 gauge three wire, put my own plug ends on it, so on and so forth, but I decided to be a much easier to buy a heavy duty extension cord because it has a lot thicker sheathing on it and well, it's already got the plug on the end of it. Because if you look at the power inverter that's sitting here behind me, on the one side, we plug that into our 12 volt battery. So we just hook the positive and negative up. We just hook the, po we just hook the positive and negative up. It then goes through the inverter, doing some crazy magic inside there that I can't explain. On the other side, it comes out with these three plugs, which provides me in my van for some off-grid 110 volt power. Meaning with these extension cords, they just plug straight into the inverter and I just run the wire to wherever I want it to be in the van. And because we went this route, it makes the amount of tools we need next to nothing. All we need to do this job is a good pair of wire cutters, a good pair of wire strippers, some wire connectors made for 12 gauge wire, and a couple of these junction boxes so I'm able to run one wire and I can split it for that area of the van. And last but not least is our cable choice. So I went four of these kits, which are rigid 25 foot, heavy duty, 12 gauge, three wire, stranded copper, not plated, all the good stuff in your wire, but it came with the ends already on it, as I mentioned previously. This wire will handle max 20 amps, which is more than enough for anything we're gonna be running off power in that van. Now, for the one end, which is the male end of the wire, this is just gonna plug straight into our inverter. It's already fused, there's no need for a panel. It can plug straight in and run it right out to our plug. On the female end of the wire, we're just gonna chop this end, take back the sheathing, pull back the wires, and we now have our three wires fully exposed and ready to be connected to our other wires inside the van. I think the most important takeaway is that you get stranded wire and not the home stuff which is solid wire because the solid wire when it vibrates and whatnot it can get weak and end up snapping then you're chasing wires so get the stranded wire i don't know if you guys can see that or not and you'll be good look at the disaster of wires we have in this place oh my goodness and from here we can start laying our 120 wire so we know our inverter is going to be right in this area where we set our power unit was going to be. Our male end of our wire is just going to hang down and then we're just going to follow it up and across. See what I'm talking about? Straight up and across to where all our other wires were going and straight down to where our junction box is going to be. So these are what I showed you last week where we had to prep this before putting the insulation on. Now these junction boxes come with four holes already pre-located for you. All I had to do was open the box up Take a chisel and a hammer and just push down where that marked center hole location is and just give it a hit with a hammer. We now have three open holes inside of our junction box and one hole that's not open because we only need three wires. Now to run my wires into these holes, what I came up with were these little bushings like this that fit right inside those holes of the conduit box. You do have to hammer them in. They're very, very tight to go in. And then for the cable to mount through, I got these Lumix connectors, which just thread right into the end of those little bushings that I purchased. And then our wire will be able to get tightened down inside of our box. And I'll show you more of that coming up here. So now that we have all of our cable entries mounted, we're gonna use more of our 3M adhesive 
and add it to the back of the junction box and bring it over to the van and stick it to the walls. Cause it's not like I can put screws to the side of the body. Once those are all mounted like this, as you can see, I'm just gonna hold them in place with duct tape cause they're on the side. That way I know they're gonna adhere properly. And now I'm gonna use our impact drill and our impact hole saw bit that we got. And we're gonna drill a hole in the top rail just so that our wires are gonna come across and down to our junction box have a place to go through. So I'm just gonna add, add a hole to this side here as well as on this side here. So now that our junction box is adhered to the side of the van and also we got our holes drilled. Now it's time for one more thing that I didn't tell you about at the beginning because well, when we talk about this, all this stuff, it gets boring real fast. So I spread it out. But this is three quarter inch loom, loam, looming, looming. And it's gonna go through our holes that we put in and then right out through the top. And we'll follow it straight down to the next set of holes and just feed it down through. We have it all the way down into our junction box. We're simply gonna shove our wire straight down through our looming, looming, whatever you wanna call it. And we're ready to plug it into our junction box. So with our main input wire, now through our little lock, as you can see, you can now pull on the wire and it cannot be pulled out of our junction box now. And we can cut off the excess. And now this piece is long enough to be our first cable for our outline. So let's bring this wire up through, put it up through our lock, and then tighten down the lock. And now we have two wires locked in, all conduited, ready to rock. Easy peasy. Now with all three wires in the box, we're just gonna strip back the sheathing Strip back the wires. And once we do have them all stripped, match all the blacks, twist them together. Then we take one of our wire connectors, twist that over top of all three blacks. And then repeat that for the grays and for the whites. I know it's hard for you guys to tell, but I'm doing the best I can here. And once they look like that, and they're nice and tight, you know nothing's coming off. She's ready to go back together. Which just means taking our cap, pushing our wires into place, and there she is. Second one complete, see? That one goes all the way up. There, let's take you on a little trip. So this one, oh, I already did that one. This one was number two that I just showed you. And this line, did the exact same thing through the hole we made, up across above the door. And then we went straight across, sorry it's really hard to see in here. We went straight across near the fan, across and down. Now giving us two cables, one that I have marked as left, and that one of course is the first one we put in, one wire coming out, which would be our plugs inside of our cabinet so that I can charge say drones or cameras or anything like that and they can be stored away in the closet. The other wire which comes at the bottom is for a heating source because it does need 110 to run the coolant area of that but more to come on that. The other wire I have marked as right of course that's the second one we did over here which has one wire coming out comes out to this side right here so I install an AC plug so we can plug in our UV water filtration system and the other one coming out this side and through with conduit as it goes to the metal comes out this side and it'll make it so we can have an AC plug again this one to power our cooktop our coffee maker all that kind of stuff on our kitchen counter now if you remember when we looked at that power inverter it had three plugs on the back side of it so for the third plug we have run a third wire in which we've labeled rear and that one just runs straight up and down along the left side again all the way to the back of the van which we've run into this column with some conduit all the way down 
and out the bottom here. So I did stop the wire here because this wire is gonna run in behind our seats and we're gonna have a plug in here so we can have power outside the back of the van as well as we're gonna have a plug here and here and that's where our seats are gonna be and it's gonna be at the kick plate down by the back of your legs. That way the plugs are out of the way but we can still pull it plug into it, charge our laptops, our phones, whatever it is we need while we're sitting at our dining room table. The only thing we have left is on the driver's side. We will have to drill a hole in this part of the body right here so that I can have a device that looks like this so we can plug into shore power. Now, I've ordered the part. I've been having a ton of time. <laughs> A ton of problem. I've been having a ton of problems with Amazon and the part didn't arrive yet and I don't want to drill the hole yet. But basically it's going to come out through this side down below the insulation and it'll bring us some wires up so we can plug into this device here which is an AC to DC charger meaning we can plug into a house or anything like that and it's going to give us full power inside of our van as well as charge our batteries or even a generator. We could hook up to a generator if we absolutely needed to. And as a final note, I better bring up because I've noticed that I've said 110 volt and I've said 120 volt throughout this video. And I just thought I'd clarify something real quick that I said same same in one of the comments there back at the beginning of the video. The reason why I said that is because 110, 115, 120, they all use the same plug and they were the same because it was 110 volt, then it was 115 volt, and then it was 120 volt, but still the same extension cord. So I just thought I'd clarify that I spent way too much time on that specific thing when I was doing my van build research. So just be aware, you know, it's all the same. You're gonna use the same plug, got it? So with that being said, that's the end of the video. So if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider doing so. No pressure, you do you, but it is completely free and it does mean the world to me. If you have subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, as always, we, we will see you next Sunday. Perfect.